First of all, thank you everybody for uh, sticking around for the last session of the day and you're missing out on free beer from HP, I guess. Um, so what I want to do real quickly was just, just talk about cloud and you know, our focus is on delivering um, a, 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 an OpenStack distribution to enterprise customers. And so we're going to go th real quickly through um, you know, some, of the, some of the highlights of why we think enterprises care about this. And then uh, Rick and Cameron are going to walk through a demo of some things that we've added into the OpenStack distribution uh, that we think it makes it easier to be consumed in the enterprise. So I was asked by my CEO at one point, why cloud computing is, ex is important? Why do enterprises care? I mean, you know, okay, I, we understand why Amazon does it, and we understand why Rackspace does it, but why would an enterprise care about it? So we came up with these slides as kind of just a, a little, a little dramatization of, of a conversation between a business executive, line of business, and the IT. Business executive says, we need faster rollout of, of services. You know, I'm getting killed by competitions doing things, I'm having to respond to the market. You know, that's gonna cost you a lot of money, right? I mean, this is, this is kind of how, how the conversation goes. How much? Uh, I don't really know. I don't have the visibility in my infrastructure that I, that, I, that I might need. Well, come on, there's gotta be unused capacity. I hear about this virtualization stuff and it's freeing up, uh, freeing up capacity, so you must be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, but I don't really know where it is. You know, I've got this pool of servers out there. I've gotta go in and look at each one of them and inventory it. Um, well, I, you know what, I'd even rather pay by usage. And the IT manager says, no, that's, that's not gonna happen. You know, I just, I just can't, run the, I can't run the business that way. So the whole idea is once you go and implement cloud computing, then the conversation changes a little bit. We need faster rollout of services. Uh, later today, okay. Not weeks, days, hours, you know, minutes. How much? A dollar fifty or two dollars and fifty cents an hour. You know, I can tell you exactly how much it's going to cost. Same as Amazon. Uh, what if I have to expand or shrink the user base? It's fine. You're now in control. I'm giving you more control over the infrastructure that you can take advantage of. And uh, I love you. Uh, yeah, it's still not going to happen, right? <laughs> so what's really happened is, and this, and this, the, 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 the contrast here is that the IT manager in the enterprise has become a cloud provider. And that's really, the, that's really the, the, the core focus that they're looking at. But there's, a, but there's a, a follow on problem. If you do that, how do you give control, but you know, some control, but maintain some control, right? I mean, you still want to make sure that, that your line of business is deploying compliant images, security patches are applied in an appropriate fashion. Um, and you, just in general, you want to make sure that, uh, that the line of business is, has got um, make it easy as possible for them to consume things, but at the same time uh, keep some control. Um, we've talked about, we've talked about, uh, obviously we're here about OpenStack. We've been uh, participating in OpenStack for, for uh, a couple years now. We, we actually are a platinum member of the, of the uh, foundation. Um, Alan Clark, who's a SUSE employee, um, uh, is, the, is the chairman of the, the OpenStack board. Um, he's also a long time experience in the Linux Foundation, uh, the OpenSUSE Foundation, so he's, he's great experience in, in, in helping drive community, um, community development, community projects. Um, we focused a lot on technical contributions around hardening, securing, um, improving Zen support. Uh, we've promoted uh, OpenStack in the OpenSUSE community, so all of our uh, development now is done in uh, what we call the uh, um, OBS, Open Build Service, so that, so that our community members can uh, more easily consume OpenStack as they, as they, uh, as they test it out. Uh, but we're also delivering an OpenStack distribution. So this is kind of our, our 2.0 product that we're going to start working on, and uh, Rick is going to walk through some, some more uh, discussions around that. All right. Well, looks like we're uh, scrunched up a little bit right there. So. <clears throat> Well, SUSE Cloud 2.0, so uh, we, we released our first version of SUSE Cloud back in uh, August of last year uh, around LinuxCon, uh, and we are looking at uh, doing our SUSE Cloud 2.0 in roughly the September-ish time frame, uh, and uh, some, there's some interesting things that we're looking to uh, be able to include uh, in that uh, 2.0. And you can see we've got the kind of, the, the color separation, uh, separating things out right here, and the, co the colors actually uh, indicate a few things. Uh, first off, the orange right here indicates the pieces uh, that are part of the general OpenStack distribution. That's the part that's coming from the community. Uh, that's, you know, everybody's been doing a great job and we've been learning a whole lot about it, but there's, there's more to it 
uh, typically than, uh, than just the OpenStack community code. There's a lot of moving parts that come into any kind of OpenStack Im implementation. Um, we believe that we have a few uh, enhancements uh, and decisions that we have made to try to uh, reduce the number of choices that you have to make as a customer, make things a little bit simpler. Um, as we like pointing out, there's uh, almost 800 different uh, c uh, configuration options that you can choose uh, in OpenStack. There's a lot of complexity. You can get paralysis by analysis. Uh, some, of the, some of the decisions that we've made, uh, for example, is that we've partnered, uh, <coughs> we, we, uh, we've taken advantage of the uh, Crowbar uh, open source project, which was originally sponsored by Dell. Uh, and uh, we are looking at establishing partnerships actually with, uh, we, are, well, we announced yesterday a uh, partnership with, uh, with Dell to be able to offer a go-to-market solution uh, of, of Dell hardware with SUSE Cloud to provide an inter -cl enterprise class uh, cloud environment. Uh, along with the Crowbar server and the services that come with it, uh, we've made a choice to go with the RabbitMQ uh, <coughs> messaging queue. Uh, we made the decision to go with post, po uh, can't even talk. Postgres uh, as our back-end database uh, to be able to handle all of the transactions back there. <coughs> uh, then we have a couple of SUSE products uh, that we feel uh, complement uh, these particular technologies and help you to uh, get the most use out of them. Uh, the underlying one, of course, is our uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, which is the base product that we offer. <coughs> the idea being that you can have an enterprise class operating system that has all the testing, has all the security penetration testing, has all the auditing, has all the hardware certifications, certi software certifications, all the things that keep you from getting fired uh, for picking an ineffect a, a, a bad, uh, making a bad decision on your, uh, on your, on your platform. Uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server serves as the basis right there. We ship within SUSE Linux Enterprise Server the Zen and KVM hypervisors, uh, and as such, we support both of those as part of the uh, as part of the OpenStack offering. Uh, we are looking to expand those options in our Cloud 2.0. Uh, we uh, we are optimistic that we'll be able to get Hyper-V support in there. Uh, we would like to get VMware support in there uh, if the uh, code is up to snuff and it looks like it's a supportable. And it looks like it's a supportable configuration. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see what, uh, how things uh, progress on, the, on that particular front. <coughs> uh, some other products we're uh, actually going to talk about a little bit today. Up in the very top here, we have a SUSE Manager. Uh, SUSE Manager is a tool that you can use to be able to actually manage all of your, li uh, your RPM-based Linux distributions <coughs> from a single pane of glass, whether they are your private cloud, private cloud guests, any public cloud guests you have, uh, your, your cloud infrastructure, your local infrastructure that's not part of the cloud, it gives you that single window into all of it and lets you have a hybrid environment that you can manage in one place. The other piece up here uh, that we're going to also show you today is one called SUSE Studio. Uh, when you're, a lot of talk has been made about going, <coughs> can you? It's your, it's your laptop. <laughs> it's not my laptop. No, I, no. I don't know the password. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, a lot of talk has been made about uh, is, is, is made about uh, getting OpenStack up and running and all the bits and pieces you need to get that done. But there's also another key point is that you don't just turn on the cloud just for the sake of the cloud. You want to actually run something on top of that. Uh, and typically, the process of creating these images uh, that you're going to run is a, a fairly cumbersome process. And SUSE Studio helps you to really streamline that process and make it a lot easier for you. <coughs> And then there are partner products. So we maintain all the uh, OpenStack APIs. We don't change any of them, anything like that. So any kind of <coughs> partner that the, uh, any kind of third-party product that integrates with OpenStack will be able to integrate with SUSE Cloud as well. And we have a couple of them that we've worked with around uh, billing and, and portals and governance and, and these kind of things. Um, so we've got a number of partners that we're talking about. We already talked, about, obviously, about Dell. Um, we have ones like uh, Cloud Cruisers and uh, the Instratus, and a couple other ones that are they're out there. there. There are several of them out there. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, uh, the question? Do we use MySQL at all? We do, uh, so the question is, do we use MySQL at all for the database? And the answer is no. We use Postgres. Why? Um, the engineering team is right there. They can answer <laughs> that question for you if you want. Uh, <laughs> that, that's the big one that I always tell people is who wants to, nobody wants to be beholden to Oracle any more than they absolutely have to. Uh, Postgres has some really nice features in terms of HA uh, that make it uh, a really good scalable database. Uh, there are some other features that you can make the argument that, that Postgres is a little bit more enterprise ready 
uh, than MySQL is. Not to say that MySQL is bad. It's a great database. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Good question. Thank you for uh, thank you for bringing that up. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna have to move a lot faster right here, but this is just kind of a quick overflow of how we see the uh, overall life cycle uh, of a cloud deployment going. Uh, so basically, you, you can have developers who are creating code applications. Uh, they're going to check their code in. Uh, Pete already mentioned we have the Open Build Service, which is a tool that we uh, sponsor where you can compile um, <coughs> code for any major Linux distribution and, and all the, the most popular hardware platforms, uh, all from a central place uh, simultaneously. And from, uh, from those, uh, those custom packages that you can be uh, creating, you can run those out into SUSE Studio or into SUSE Manager uh, and then be able to use those to create the workloads uh, that you need to be able to use on your cloud. All right, so we've mentioned SUSE Studio a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much more of it uh, simply because we're going to uh, actually see the demo and you're going to actually see us do some uh, demo without a net. Uh, we're, we did not learn from uh, HubSpot. We're going to try and do live demo here today. So let's go ahead and do some showtime. All right, and I will increase the font size, I, size, I promise. Okay, where's, the, uh, where's your studio instance cam? All right. That that visible in the back there? I'll take that as a yes. All right. So SUSE Studio is a web-based tool. Uh, we do have a version of this that's up online at SUSEstudio.com. Um, that is kind of our community version where we sandbox things, we try out new ideas. Um, it's not necessarily something I would want to base uh, any kind of production environment on, but it does give you a great opportunity to be able to kick the tires and see if it's something that will work for you uh, before you invest in SUSE Studio on-site for your, uh, for your data center. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and create ourselves a new custom appliance <coughs> to be able to do something. We're going to start off, uh, we have a number of different templates you can start from. Uh, this one is called Juice, Just Enough Operating System. It's literally just barely enough OS to be able to boot your system, and that's it. So in and of itself, it's not terribly useful, but what it does is it pre gives you the ability to then take that bare bones and layer on only the pieces that you need to be able to accomplish your task. This makes your file size much smaller uh, when you're dealing with your image. It also means that uh, from a security and auditing perspective, uh, you, are, you have less exposure and risk because you don't have to worry about a specific service being turned off on the system if it's never on the system to begin with. <coughs> All right, so let's do the 64-bit. All right, you sir out here at the front that was asking the question, what's your name? Prakasha. Prakasha? Oh, right, let's see if I can do this. Like that? Uh, we're not gonna go there. We'll just say Prakasha's. No, it's an N. Oh. The last one is an N instead of an H. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, wonderful server. All right. So, Precaution wants to make a wonderful server. In this case, we're going to do something simple. We're just going to make a simple web server uh, that we can come out here and just so you can get exposure to the ideas. Um, <coughs> let's go ahead and. Oh, oops. All right. Let's see if we can find a way to. Uh, all right. Uh, we can see most of what we need to see right here. Okay. All right, so we can come in here, we can see the name. Let's go ahead and come into our software. Uh, we have a number of different ways you can uh, add in software. You can add in, if you have your own custom repositories, whether that's with the open build service or some other method, uh, you can uh, add them in right here. You can upload single RPMs. Um, you can simply do a plain text search for whatever it is you want. We also have what are called patterns. A pattern is a pre-built uh, configuration uh, of a uh, compilation of one or more packages that fulfills a specific role. So in this case, we're going to do ourselves a uh, lamp stack, maybe, and we'll do actually, we'll search in here, find lamp. We're going to build ourselves a lamp server, just a simple Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Uh, we can look in here and we can see a plain text description, we can also see uh, that uh, by default it's just the Apache web server, but we have these other additional recommended software we can add as well. 
for right now we're just going to do the basic one and add it in and we're going to have ourselves an Apache web server. We're super complex here. All right, so let's go ahead and configure it up. So uh, we can go ahead and set things. We can set our time zone. We can enable our firewall if we have it, do the network. If you're going to use local authentication, uh, you can set up your users and passwords right here. Um, this one is surprisingly popular. Uh, lots of people like to be able to uh, customize. So you can select a logo. So if you have your company logo, you can upload it and put it in there. If you're really adventurous, you can take a, get your webcam and take a picture of yourself and upload it so that everybody has to see your face when they boot up their servers. Um, make sure it's a good hair day before you do that. I'll leave it up to you as to what your definition of a good hair day is. Uh, <clears throat> on the server side right here, uh, if we had set this up as, say, a Postgres or a MySQL database, you can actually upload the uh, MySQL dump file and set up your users so your database can be pre-populated and ready to use as soon as you launch the uh, launch your workload. <clears throat> and the other one I wanted to show is off the screen. Let's see if we can get to it. No, nope, can't get to it. Well, okay. There's another uh, button over here where you can actually click on the uh, scripting and be able to see that where you can do um, scripts that can be run at the end of the build or whenever the appliance boots. Uh, whether that's the first boot or every boot. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can configure up your system. Uh, you also have the ability to upload overlay files. So if you have a tarball-based application or if you have specific config files for, say, authenticating to your Active Directory infrastructure uh, or any of these kind of things, you can upload these configuration files and make those be part of your, uh, be part of your, uh, your appliance. And then when we get to the build section, this is actually the kind of fun part, where you can see you can build this for pretty much every hardware platform, uh, every platform under the sun. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, we're going to do, be doing cloud stuff. Uh, so we're going to se select the SUSE cloud slash OpenStack slash KVM and go ahead and kick off our build. And this is going to build us a QCOW2 image. Uh, you can see that we have a lot of other different options. Now, in the interest of time, uh, we're not going to wait the five minutes for that to build. We're actually going to go over and look at another, uh, another one that we've already built uh, while we're waiting for that one to uh, finish off. So let's come over here. All right. Let me show you the next neat little thing right here. So we've got uh, our, <coughs> our appliance we've already built over here. You can see we've got a feature over here called Test Drive. What Test Drive does is it'll actually launch up, an uh, launch up a copy of this image on your system so that you can uh, then uh, log into it. Uh, you can activate networking and, and SSHN and copy in large quantities of files. And it'll keep track of all the file system changes that are made during your session. And then you can go in and grab those changes and pull them back and make them be part of your, uh, of your overall appliance. And, uh, and, this way you can, and in this way, you can, uh, you can be very granular, very detailed uh, in the terms of how you configure up your system. You get a lot of control. All right, we're booting up over there. OK, so while that is, boot, uh, while that is going, Let's come back over here and see if we're, how we're doing on our build. In just a moment here, I'm going to turn, the, turn it over to Cameron, who's going to walk us through the actual cloud portion uh, and seeing how this, is going to, how this image that we have is going to be consumed uh, on the cloud. we got a spinner. Everybody cross your fingers. Demo without a net. This is a lot of stuff to be running on one laptop, so let's see. Yeah, it's taxing that CPU on there. Yep, we're picking it out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Cameron while this is building, uh, and uh, he's going to walk you through uh, the actual cloud portion. Live demo. Got to love it. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we're going to start out with a couple of things here. You're all familiar with, uh, with OpenStack, of course. And uh, so let's go ahead and open up uh, the SUSE Cloud dashboard here and see how we SUSEified this little dashboard. Pretty common dashboard that you've, that you've all seen. Uh, in here, 
Um, we have some images that uh, have been uh, loaded in there. As, as you've seen from studio, this is actually one of the, uh, the images that was dropped in there. Uh, in a little bit, uh, as this is uh, building out, um, I'm actually going to bring this down and see if I can't get this thing, thing to fit on the screen just a little bit better. Susan Cloud is getting hammered right now. Her studio is getting hammered. As you can see, that CPU is just chugging. Uh, this will probably help yeah, if we shut up. down test drive. <laughs> um, so you can imagine this whole, as we're, as we're talking about this uh, Sousa studio stuff, and we're creating images and uh, building your image so that it can be plugged into a cloud environment, namely OpenStack in this case. Um, think about this whole life cycle of these tools working together with the cloud. Building your image, having that image with everything that you want on it, your application and whatnot, and having that image automatically deployed right into your cloud environment. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Um, eventually it will actually show up uh, right under the images um, within this dash dashboard here. Um, I've created a user in here. Uh, his, uh, his name is www.joe. Now, there's a couple of things I've done with Joe, web user. And uh, if we go ahead and log out of admin and log in as web Joe here, Yeah. Hmm. Did I name it that password? <laughs> oh. Log in as admin and reset his password. I forget what I even named that guy. Oh, I know what it is now. <coughs> okay. We're logged in as Joe. He's a, a tenant on the web team. And uh, he's going to start up an instance that we've actually uh, created in our uh, studio environment. And uh, so we're going to take a look at the images that are available. Uh, we have one that's Slezzy 11 SP2. Soon we'll have one that is a, an entire LAMP stack that uh, might be better for uh, Joe, a web user. And uh, we'll go ahead and launch this particular instance in the cloud. And uh, we're going to. We're going to name this uh, Summit 2013. We're going to launch that in the cloud. So it's starting up, spawning the, the KVM in the background, finding the compute node that's suitable uh, for the size. It's, of course, a tiny one. And he's going to start booting up. And during this boot up process, there's a couple of things we dropped into this image. Um, this particular image contains information such as uh, the necessary uh, functionalities to plug right into SUSE Manager. So when uh, it boots up for the first time, he's going to automatically register himself to SUSE Manager's management framework. So now we've created an image uh, using SUSE Studio. And now we're plugging it in uh, to our management framework as well after we start that, that instance in the cloud. 
So now we can do several things with that. This takes just a minute to actually boot up. Um, let's see where he's at. He hasn't quite got any networking yet. <coughs> any questions at this point? So he's asking what kind of control do we have over the images that we're putting up into this, into this cloud environment. Is that right? So the control is with Mr. Joe user here. Whoever you're designating on your team to take care of those, those instances in your cloud environment, uh, that's who's got that control. And you can go in there, you can stop those instances, terminate them. Uh, at any given time. I think his question was on the images. So if you're building multiple oh. images, how do you clean those up and how do you control where those go? Yeah, so that's, that's a really good question. So on the images, um, when Sousa Studio builds an image, uh, we have what's called a, a webhook in, uh, um, uh, on, one of the con on the control node that basically plugs in with Glance. And it's continuously listening uh, for information from the studio server. And it, when, when it gets information that uh, it's, it's got a KVM build for, that's ready to go, um, it will go out and grab it. Um, if it's any other kind of build, it, it won't touch it. It'll just leave it alone. Um, so it goes out and grabs that and then uses the glance commands to import that into uh, your cloud environment. So you can actually go in to the OpenStack web UI and go in and remove those out if you need to at any time. Um, so you might see like multiple versions of it in there. If you're building a new version of it, um, you'll see a new version in there if you've created an extra version. So and you, can, you can also modify the, uh, the listening script so that, for example, with the, with the, with the uh, versioning scheme, you yeah. can set it so the only point releases, point releases don't get uh, automatically pulled in. You can set, ha have the logic such that only a .o release uh, gets pulled into the, uh, pulled into your cloud. It's, it's, it's very flexible in terms of what logic makes sense for you and your particular organization. Say that again. Upload, yes, absolutely, absolutely. If you grant them that within Keystone. Right. Yes, yes. And that, and that's, a, that's a good point that you bring up because uh, SUSE Studio isn't just for our SUSE framework. If you have a framework that's already, you know, KVM based, OpenStack based, you could plug SUSE Studio into that. Okay. There's a question in the back. Two Is that minutes. Doug? Two minutes. Oh, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Summit 13, uh, the instance has already booted up here, and uh, um, so he should have registered himself with uh, SUSE Manager. Let's go over here and see uh, what's going on with that. Go ahead and log in to Susan Manager. Oh, that's the wrong, wrong link, sorry. <coughs> and let's see what systems we've got available in here. And we've got some cloud VMs, systems, and we've got Summit 13. He's, he's got himself registered uh, to Susan Manager. Zoom in. And so this, uh, this whole life cycle uh, comes into play now. We have, we've built an image. Um, we have configured that image to be plugged into SUSE Manager. And now we've put that image into the cloud and he's booted up. And now you can see him being managed in SUSE Manager. So we have these life cycle of tools working together with OpenStack 
uh, to be able to give you that life cycle management. And let's see if, if, uh, if our image is built yet over here in Sousa Studio. Uh, let's see. Go to studio. And studio is not doing so hot right now. Yeah, a lot right now. Anyways, <laughs> he's probably stuck building and building at this point. Yeah, he's, he's pegged on the CPU. Um, once he's done building, that will eventually slide right into the OpenStack framework there, and you'll see it as an image. So if you want to stick around after we're done here, then you feel free to come on up, and we'll, we can show you, and you can see it uh, finish off. And show up. Okay, uh, that's what we have for you today. Um, Kent, do you want to go ahead and do the drawing? Yeah. Have we got a little card from everybody? Everyone got your... Everybody else? Uh, who, who's going to be our impartial observer to uh, draw this? <laughs> All right, thank you very much for coming.